What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So for this week's model, I thought I'd change it up a little bit and do something I don't usually do. So we're going to go with some post-apocalyptic weapons. Let's get into it. So like almost every model I start with begins with a cylinder, a square, or a sphere. Now because I was starting with the axe handle, it just made sense to start with the cylinder. So here I'm just scaling it a little bit bigger, making it longer, and inserting some edge loops just to kind of get that curved shape I'm going for. Now it's really important to take your time in this blocking out stage. You can make your life a lot more difficult than it needs to be by trying to change the shape when you're halfway through the modeling process or after you have a bunch of polys added to it. So really take your time and make sure that you like the main shape before you proceed and start adding more polys. So I was pretty happy with what I had, so now I'm going to move on to the blade. Here I'm just taking the faces, deleting them, grabbing the edges and extruding them out. I want them to all meet up in the middle so then I can attach them all together. So here I'm just deleting the faces clicking on each edge and pressing bridge to combine them together. And then same thing here, just grabbing those edges and extruding them in. I was just messing around with the verts and the shape, just trying to get something a little closer to what I had in mind. I was going off of a reference photo I found on ArtStation as well. Not paying too much attention to topology or anything like that, I usually clean it up when the UVing comes. It just allows me to work a little more freely with the design. So here I'm just inserting some more edges to try to give it that shape I'm looking for. smooth this object when I'm done so I'll keep pressing 3 on my keyboard and just to see what it looks like smooth and just adding some supporting edges on those corners so they won't collapse in on themselves and now to bevel the inside corners just to make those as well a little more sharper when I smooth it and once again, I'm not paying too much attention to topology. I find it just allows me to work a little more freely with the shapes. And I can always clean that up down the road when things are more in their final positions. And here, just duplicating the object over, I knew I wanted two blades to be side by side and held together. So just trying to figure out how thick I want them to be. And now moving on to the bolts. So I wanted this bolt to have a hole in the middle so a bolt could fit in there. So an easy way to do that is with the circularize tool that's directly below the Bifrost tab. It's very handy and I use it all the time. So here I'm just extruding the edge, extruding it once again and then hitting that circularize tool which then turns it into a circle where I can extrude that inwards. 
Then I grab the whole object, duplicate it, and then combine them together. And then I click on the edges and bridge them together. Something my art director once told me that I found pretty helpful was almost every edge has even a, the slightest bevel to it. It's hard to come across anything that has a perfect corner. So even adding the slightest bevel to it, you'll find a big improvement with the realism, just how the light hits it and how it looks with the shadows and just something to keep in mind. I, it really helped me out and then I found a big improvement with the realism of my models once I started beveling all my edges. Obviously, that's dependent on what your model's being used for. You're not always allowed to add all the polys you want, so keep that in mind, but I found it pretty helpful. And now to create the teeth. So, the easiest way I found was just clicking those edges and beveling them, just to give me some more faces to work with. Then I highlight those faces, Control e to extrude them, and pull those out and I can scale them together to form that point that I'm looking for. Now because there's no supporting edges on those teeth, when I press 3 on my keyboard to smooth it, it turns all those sharp edges into round edges. So here I'm just going to go through, double click all those edges that I want to retain that sharp edge, and I'm going to add a small bevel to them. Alright, so now moving on to the second blade, I want to do the exact same thing I just did, but I wanted the teeth to be offset from this one, so when you're at that side angle, you can tell that there's an object behind it. So I'm double clicking those edges, just like I did on the first time, but what I'm going to do is grab those verts and slide them over a little bit, just so when I extrude them, the teeth are going to be in a different position. Now using the scale tool, I'm just flattening those edges so they're straight and then adding a bevel so I can support that edge. Working on a post-apocalyptic model definitely works in my favor just because things are supposed to be a little rough and nothing's supposed to be perfect. So I'm definitely trying to take advantage of that and not worrying too much about the positions of everything. So I was pretty stoked with how the model was looking, so it's time to move on to the next part. I want to work on those bandages or wraps that were helping keep the blade attached to the club. So to create that, I just started off with a cylinder as always and increased the caps to two. I then deleted those inner faces, double clicked those edges and bridged them together. I can then scale it down and put it nice and tight around the club. I'm not worrying too much about the shape right now. I'm just trying to get them in the right positions and then afterwards I can go in and refine them just to get that exact look I'm looking for.
So just taking that object and duplicating it over and over again and just keep layering it. The more you layer, the more realistic it's going to look. It's that tedious stage that really takes a lot of time, but the more time you spend on it, the better it's going to look in the end. So just take your time, use those verts around and those edges, scale them in and out, overlap them, and just give it that look like there's a wrap or a bandage that's been wrapped around this pole that's keeping that metal attached to the wood. I'm adding some more wrap around where the metal parts would actually come in contact with the club. So I'm just going to grab one of the cylinders I created earlier and just duplicate that over, scale it down and fit it as tight as I can just to hide where this connection point is between the metal and the wood. Now I'm just going to go around, double click those edges on the cylinders and bevel them a little bit. Now I want them to be smoothed out not have hard edges because I'm looking for a cloth kind of material that I'm going to add to these. So after I'm done adding those polys, I'm just hitting 3 on my keyboard and smoothing it out. So I basically just do this over and over again for the next little while as I just refine these shapes and get them to fit a little bit better. So I'll speed up this section as it's just the same thing that I'm repeating over and over again.
Alright, so I was pretty happy with the top, at least for the time being. So now I'm just going to move to the bottom so I can start the bottom handle. So it's the same process as before. I'm going to create a cylinder, add a cap of two, delete those interfaces, and then bridge them together. I wanted this one to be more like a leather material than a cloth, so I didn't overlap them as much as the top part, but I definitely wanted to have something similar. So just blocking out the positions, not worrying too much about the details and how they actually overlap. Just want to get them in the right positions and then I can go refine them afterwards. I thought that the club should have a little, just a little edge there where the handle would be. Not really sure why I added it, just thought I should give it a little something extra. Okay, so now it's time to jump to the nails. So this is pretty straightforward. Just starting off with a cylinder as usual, adding an edge loop and then selecting those faces and extruding them out. And then I'm scaling down that nail head to give it that thickness I'm looking for. And then adding a small bevel to the edge. Now I went with two nails, um, one was straight and one was bent and just duplicated those and just pasted them all over. So I was pretty happy with how that one was turning out, so I thought I'd, I'd start on the second axe. So just grouped all that one together and moved it to the side. 
So just like the first handle, uh, starting off with a cylinder, I'm going to scale that out and add a couple edge loops to it. And I don't want to rush this part, just trying to get the right shape that I'm looking for. Now for the axe head, I'm just going to start with another cylinder. I'm just going to select those front faces, extrude those outwards, and then scale them in. I'm then going to add a couple of edge loops into the middle just to help give that axe a little more shape. And same for the back, I'm just going to select those faces and extrude those out and then scale them into a point. And then add a couple of edge loops in between and give it that curve. So I just added that edge because that face had more than four points. I end up removing those in a little bit because I add a sharpened edge to the tip of that axe, but just for the time being I was trying to clean it up. So now moving on to the brass knuckles, I'm going to start again with a cylinder and add a cap of two, delete those faces, select the edges and bridge them together. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can then scale it down and duplicate it three more times to have a total of four. Then I'm going to move these to have a little bit of a bend between them. just want to position the faces as well so when I bridge them it's easy to connect. So once I'm happy with the shape and I scale them down, I can then select them all, combine them together, and then select the faces, delete them, grab the edges, and bridge them together. those sharp points on the brass knuckles I'm just going to go ahead and select the faces Control E to extrude those out I use a scaling tool just to line them all up together and then I can squish them into a point And it's the same thing for the other end. I want to attach it onto the handle. So I'll just grab those faces, extrude those out, add an edge loop, delete those faces, and then bridge those together.
So now moving on to the string that's going to be holding those brass knuckles onto the wood handle. I'm going to just create another cylinder, same thing as always, just adding a cap of two, deleting those faces, and then selecting those edges and bridging them together. I'm just going to scale this one down really small. I want it to look like string so it can't be too thick. I'm then going to duplicate that and start positioning them all over the handle. Okay, I was pretty happy with how it was looking, but I thought it looked a little bit too plain and I wanted to add a little more detail, so I go in and grab some of those faces and start moving them around just to add a little bit of nix and dents into the wood. Now I could have taken this to another step and actually brought it into ZBrush or another program similar and just made a high poly model and added all the wear and nicks and scratches that I wanted to, and then I could project those details onto my lower poly mesh. In this case, I didn't want to do that, I was just trying to make a shorter video, so just to add a little few more details, I went in and selected those faces and moved them around. Now for the top handle of the axe, I just grabbed one of the cylinders I made below and duplicated that, stretched it out and brought it up. So I was pretty happy with how it was turning out. When I moved the camera back, I noticed on the first axe I missed some cloth around where the blades are holding them together. So I'm just going to quickly hop over, grab some of those bandages I already created and just duplicate those over and position them where I need them.
Now jumping back to the second axe, I noticed it looked a little plain, so I wanted to add something extra to the bottom. So now I wanted to make some holes into that metal ring on the bottom, so I can do that with a boolean. I find it's much easier creating booleans with lower polys. So this time I made a six-sided cylinder. Um, I find it's a little bit easier with an eight-sided, but either one will work. So here I just select both and boolean out some holes. Then I just need to add some polys so each point is connected, otherwise the faces will look really messed up when I smooth it out. So when I clicked on these edges on the holes to add some bevels to them, it wouldn't allow me and that's because some of the verts weren't connected. Sometimes when you do a boolean this will happen, so I had to zoom in, slide those verts over, and using the target weld tool I just welded those verts back together. And then I could add the bevels on the edges like I originally wanted. So now I'm just adding some bevels to the brass knuckles. Now I'm just looking back, making a few adjustments to the models to things that I just noticed were not in position. For example, the first axe, I noticed it should have some screws near the front, just so it looks like they're all wrapped around. So I knew I only wanted renders from this side, so I wasn't adding a lot of detail on the opposite side of these axes. Obviously, if these were going to be used in a video game or any other thing, I would probably have to add that detail. But just to save a little time in this video, I was only focusing on this side. So now just moving down to the handle on the axe, I just wanted to add some bevels to the edges. I do go through later and delete all the faces on the insides when I start UVing. It's definitely a good habit to get into, just deleting all the faces that aren't being viewed in the scene. Not only do you save on performance having less polys in the scene, but you actually save a lot of room on your UV map. So it's a win-win and definitely a habit you should get into. like the other axe going through and moving some of those faces just add a little few indents like there's some scratches and it's been beaten up just don't want it looking so perfect
now just quickly jumping back to that second axe I did notice how all the bandages and those wraps on both models were looking pretty consistent and similar so I wanted to change this one up just a tiny bit I also knew I wanted to add a leather material to it so just grabbing those inner edges and shrinking them in a little bit just giving it that effect like it's peeling back a little bit just going to add a little bit of an edge to my blade. I noticed when I went back um, you couldn't tell that there would be a sharp edge and I was thinking ahead to when I come to the texturing how I wanted to go about that. So I just added an edge loop around and shrunk the tip a little more together. This will also make it much easier to add a second texture. I can just click those faces where that sharp edge would be and I can just apply that second material to it. So the axes are done, now I'm just going to go through and show the UVs. So here are the UVs on the first axe as well as the second one. And also quickly showing how I deleted all those unnecessary faces. Now time to export and jump into Substance. Alright, so now importing my model from Maya, going down to the texture set settings and scrolling down to bake mesh maps. I'm then setting my output size to 4K and I'm clicking use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Once again, this is not being used in anything else except for just for the purpose of this video. So this was the only mesh I was dealing with. And then going down to bake selected textures. Substance will do its magic and make you some texture maps. And now it's time to start texturing. So starting off with the second axe, I wanted to start off with the handle. Starting off with the smart material, going in and tweaking a few of the settings and the colors. Here I'm choosing another smart material for the axe blade. I found this really cool iron texture going in, tweaking a few of the settings, then setting it to a black mask, and then assigning it to the mesh. earlier I wanted to have that sharp edge of the blade a different texture so I grabbed the exact same iron and just started tweaking a few of the settings and the colors to have a little bit of a brighter texture on the tip. I eventually didn't like this and I ended up going with a steel texture but just experimenting with a few different things and seeing what I like. And now moving on to the leather, just starting off with another smart material, tweaking a few of the settings and changing the colors.
Here I thought it'd be pretty cool to add a few engravings just on the side of the wood, like they're adding a kill count or I don't know, something. So to do this, I started with a plastic matte material and I drag that right into my handle group and I place that right above the base material color. Then I went ahead and slid the height slider down a little bit, just depending on how much of a groove you wanted to make. I then go and just imprint on the wood exactly where I wanted those nicks and scratches to be. The nice thing with this is I can change that blue color to any shade later on, so I knew I wanted to make it a little darker than the wood color. If I put this texture below the base color map, the imprint would still be there, but it would be the same color as the wood and it probably wouldn't stand out as much. Whereas if I'm placing it right above, I can actually make the shade a little darker black so it just stands out a little bit more. And now it's time to add all the blood. So for the blood, I went ahead and just used a glossy plastic material. Afterwards, I can tweak the settings and the colors. I just have a lot of control, so I tend to always start with one of the plastics. I just went ahead and changed it to a darker red color. And then using the dirt brush, I just started painting on blood all over the model. And like I mentioned before, what I like to do is just go a little excessive, um, a little more than what you want, and then you can, with your eraser tool, you can actually apply a different brush. I always end up using a dirt brush, and then you can take away some of that material you put on. I just find applying it and then taking away and applying it and taking away, you just add layers and layers, and the more you do that, the more realistic it ends up looking. Now I'm just taking some back and you can keep doing this over and over again by taking back, add a little bit more and take it back and as you layer it, you can get some pretty cool results. Now I knew I wanted most of the blood to be at the front as if they were just killing something or chopped something up and all that blood was kind of squirting out from the front so I was keeping that in mind as I was applying that texture. And moving down just add a little bit more to those brass knuckles. I'm choosing another plastic material and changing this one to a darker black. I'm just going to go through and adding another shade of color over top of the model. I find it was just looking a little bit too clean and with all this blood and all these nicks and scratches all over it, it would be a little bit more worn out and a little more dirty. So just like I did before, I'm going to go add a little bit more than I actually want and then with the eraser tool and the dirt brush, I'm just going to pull some of that back. going back and making those scratches a little darker just so they stand out a little bit more. All right, 
right, so time to jump onto the other axe. So I started with the cloth material and I found this one on Substance Source. I was trying to make it work but it just wasn't looking right so I switched up to the camo texture which is really cool and I was actually thinking of doing that and just keeping it as the camo but I ended up just copying or changing one of the colors to a darker beige and then copying that color code into the other camo colors so it was just one consistent color. And then right clicking it, turning it to a black mask, and then assigning it to all the meshes that I want the cloth material to be assigned to. I noticed how on one of the pieces of cloth, the UV wasn't lining up correctly. It was just a problem on my end and I didn't want to go back into my end and fix it. So rather than doing that, I just duplicated the texture and reassigned it to that strip of cloth. And then I just rotated it so it was lined up correctly. I didn't like the white that was showing on the edges, so I decided to switch that over to black. So next was moving on to the wood material. I was trying a few things out. I really like this rotten wood look. So I first went with that and I was trying to make it work, but for some reason it just didn't look right. So I ended up switching over to this wood chest stylized material that already came with substance. It looked really good. The only problem was the fibers were showing up horizontally. It was an easy fix, just opening up the material, going down to the fibers and then rotating them 90 degrees so they were showing up vertically. So next up was the metal. I ended up choosing another smart material, this one being Steel Ruined. Looked really good, just had to open it up, tweak some of the settings, and then I ended up signing that to the blade as well as the nails. So here I wasn't sure which material to use on the handle. I started experimenting with a few of the leather materials, but it just wasn't looking right, so I ended up choosing the exact same cloth material I used on the top. Just copied one of those over and then reassigned it to all of those meshes. So now it's time to add some blood. Just going over to the other axe, copying over the Blastic Glossy Blood texture, and then pasting it onto this one. So like I always do, I just go a little excessive and a little crazy at the beginning, and then with the eraser tool and choosing another dirt brush or whatever brush you wanted, you could just take that away. And I find layering it and just repeating that process, I find you get a really realistic result, and the more you do it, the better it looks. Especially when you start using different brushes and you make some different textures and you start just combining all of these together as well as layering them, it just starts to look really good. It's just something that the longer you spend the better it's going to look. I was making sure to make most of the blood show up on the front, just imagining that 
the impact from the axe hitting something and spraying it up on the club. Most of it would be on the front, so I'm just keeping that in mind as I'm painting it over. Another thing was with this plastic glossy material, it's really specular, and I didn't want the cloth material to show up like it was really wet. So I just went over and started erasing the areas just so I could show the other material showing through. I'm just experimenting with the blood, just spraying it on in different areas, seeing what I like. I wanted that metal texture to show as well, so I didn't want the whole thing covered with blood. So just seeing exactly what I wanted and trying different things out. Now I started to realize the blood was too consistent. It was just one tone and one shade of red. So I went ahead and added another plastic material and just changed the color to a darker shade. Just adding it in with the blood is just a little more realistic and something you can do is actually just keep adding more colors in. I could have added some more purples, some blues, and maybe some other shades of red. As well as changing up your brush, it could just the more you do, the more realistic it's gonna look. And like I mentioned before, because that plastic blood texture is so specular, it was just making the cloth material look a little too wet. So I just started to go in and erase some areas. Just wanted that cloth texture to show up a little bit more. So I noticed how the axe on the left was a little less interesting, at least in my opinion, so I decided to switch back over and add a little more blood. I added also a few fingerprints by those engravings on the wood, I just thought adding a couple more details would make it more interesting.
that's about it. I end up going back and adding a few more fingerprints as well as erasing it a little bit to blend it in with the wood, but that's basically everything. Thanks for tuning in to this week's video. I know it was a little different than usual, just wanted to change it up and do something different. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I have a fun model for next week, so stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one.